Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Ortlieb Seat Pack. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO112. So, this product, uh, what is it? It's a bike packing bag that mounts under your saddle behind your seat post. Uh, the bag then kind of explodes outwards behind the saddle. Um, it's honestly really impressive how far like away from the saddle a lot of these uh, these saddle packs can can make it. Um, they they kind of look like impossible feats of of physics, um, but there you go. Um, so Ortlieb sells this bag in two available sizes. Uh, there's an 11 liter one and there's a 16 and a half liter one. Uh, I, of course, got the bigger one because I am absolutely obsessed with cargo capacity on my bike. Um, this is one of the largest saddle packs that I found when I was uh, looking around um, and shopping initially. The only one larger that I that I did find was a 17 liter uh, by Apidura that's, uh, honestly, it's shaped very, very similarly to this Ortlieb seat pack. I wonder, I do wonder if those two companies probably were taking notes off of each other. And, um, so yeah, I, I imagine that a lot of the stuff that I'm going to say in this, um, review will apply at least, at least the stuff that it has to do with like the, the shape of the bag itself. Those will probably apply to the Apidura as well. Um, but I have also, I have, ch- I have tried, uh, one other, uh, saddle pack, um, the Revelate Spine Lock. So I will be reviewing that as well during the next episode of Second Opinion. So, uh, stay tuned, subscribe to the show so that you can, uh, hear that one when it comes out as well. So let's talk for just a moment about like, like, why would you want something like this instead of just like packing everything that you want into panniers? Because like panniers can, can, come in much, much larger sizes, right? Um, I mean, you know, the, the Ortlieb um, back roller classic like that, that I use on a day-to-day basis when I'm here in the cities, um, it, uh, you know, the, the, they come in a pair and each one of those uh, has 20 liters of capacity, whereas like this this seat pack, right, it caps out at, at uh, 16 and a half liters. So, um yeah, the reasoning the reasoning behind this type of bag is that when you're like doing some r- proper bike packing, right? So really backcountry stuff, really getting off road, um, instead of like touring, right? Touring being more of a I'm on a long road trip, but I'm still I'm on pavement the majority of the time. Um, cargo racks and panniers can give you a lot of trouble when you're when you're you know out there. In the back country, um, because they tend to like flex a little bit and shift the weight around. Um, sometimes they honestly like pop off if you if you go over like you know really really bumpy stuff. Um, so a lot of a lot of bike packers prefer to have bags that strap directly onto the bike's body. So um, you know a saddle pack is one one piece of that puzzle you would probably also have you know a big old frame bag um some stuff maybe strapped to the sides of your fork um some stuff strapped underneath your handlebars you know you're you're gonna load up you're gonna load up every conceivable spot (laughs) on your bike's frame uh for for a good good long bike packing trip So this particular um, bag is intended for, you know, packing lightweight, compressible items, um, things like clothing or like your sleeping bag. Um, Honestly, if you put too much weight into it, it does sag significantly. Uh, I stress tested it by carrying, uh, I loaded it up with as many cans of soda that I could that that ended up being 18 cans of soda um, and I went for a little 30 minute ride and it it had drooped a lot by the end of that ride I have very very long legs so my seat post is very very tall um, and uh, and if my seat was you know any lower uh, at kind of a, a normal more normal height um, that bag probably would have been rubbing against my tire which would have been very very bad um, and actually, I think I think Ortlieb kind of knows that this is a problem because they sell. Um, it's sold separately, but they do sell 
a uh, support strap that you can get for this for this uh, seat pack um, to kind of help hold it up. Um, so that's an, an like an, an extra strap that you can uh, thread through the the underside of your saddle and it kind of attaches to one of the one of the loops um, at the end of the bag uh, to kind of hold it up there. And if you want to see like a picture of um, of the bag after that ride that I was mentioning, uh, I, I'll, I'll include some links to pictures that I've posted on Twitter of it. The shape of the bag also makes like packing it pretty challenging, despite the fact that it is pretty much intended for stuff like sleeping bags and you know clothing and compressible stuff like that. Um, I have had trouble like getting those compressible items all the way down into the end of the bag because like the the bag when I say that it explodes outwards from from the saddle like I mean it really like it explodes in, in almost all directions the opening of the bag when you've got it all completely unrolled it's very very wide um, but then it tapers down very aggressively in this kind of wedge shape it's it's like an ice cream cone really you know down to this point uh, right there where it where it meets um, your seat post and like getting getting a a sleeping bag you know that's meant for 30 like 30 degrees below fahrenheit you know like a, a real a, a big thick winter sleeping bag like it's really hard to compress those into this small space when you can't even like reach your hands down into that small space. Um, so what I ended up doing when I was like trying, you know, trying to pack um, a lot of a lot of uh, clothing and, and sleeping bags and stuff down into it is I ended up taking the boom arm from my microphone stand here and just kind of like using that as a ramrod to like tamp it down uh, into into this bag. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's something that, um, I, I didn't have a problem with, uh, with some of the other bags that I've tried. Um, so once again, come back for the next episode of Second Opinion for a review of a, a different saddle pack. And yeah, I really wouldn't advise trying to pack things other than like, clothing which can be any shape right this bag does a very very poor job if you try to put like like solid objects into it right um so anything like your your camping stove or like fuel canisters or anything like that like it's going to be really hard to to pack stuff in there um and so like m me trying to use this bag in the cities you know uh like <laughs> during during um, the winter when I was riding around on a fat bike that I couldn't get a cargo rack on and I couldn't use my panniers at all. I spent an entire winter trying to use like this seat pack and a frame bag as like my only cargo capacity on my bike. And it became quite challenging sometimes because the things, the objects that you want to carry around with you when you're just like in the city, they're, they, they, can be bulkier even if they're not super heavy it's just like you know trying to fit like you can't put a book uh, a large book or a laptop into like either like into this bag and it's it's uh yeah it's a challenge um and you know I, I mean to be fair it's not designed for that um but it is it is a limitation of the bag now, with that said, it does uh, provide a little bit of versatility with the elastic straps that are on the top of the bag. Um, you can, you know, you can slip something um, not too large, but, you know, something that might be awkwardly shaped that might be difficult to fit into any of your bags. Um, I have usually packed like a my sleeping pad uh, on top of this bag. I've seen other people like um, putting their, their sandals and things like that, um, onto the tops of their, of their saddle packs. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a nice little touch. Um, and Ortley, like, you know, it's a pretty generous, um, little system of straps cause they're all, you know, it crosses over itself twice. Um, so you've got like three different loops areas to, to really play with there. Um, that's a, that's a definitely a good feature. 
Another weird effect of the shape of this bag is that when you don't have anything in it and you, you know, close it up and roll it up as tight as you can, it kind of becomes like this floppy mess uh, behind your saddle. And it's, yeah, when you, when you roll it down far enough so that it isn't going to just like, you know, sag, like, like the stuff that's inside it, oddly enough, kind of helps to hold it up, um, provided that the stuff that you're putting in it is not too heavy, right? Um, so it, it, it is a weird, a weird situation where like the bag is kind of relying on the stuff that you're putting in it in order to, um, you know, r- retain its shape. And uh, so, yeah, when you're when you just happen to be riding around and you don't have anything in the bag, um, it kind of, yeah, it flops around and um, you have to roll it down so far that you you can't actually use any of like the little slots that they have on it for like putting a taillight in, um, which is kind of weird. As for mounting it onto the bike itself. Ortlieb is using just some like generic straps and buckles, um, so this means that it will work on pretty much any bike. Um, no, no compatibility worries or anything there. Um, but this also means that it might sway around a little bit behind your saddle, um, and so that's definitely another reason to make sure that you're only loading lightweight things into this into this bag. Um, cause you definitely wouldn't want heavy things shifting around and changing, you know, changing the handling of your bike, especially since it's like, it's so high up. Um, it's, you know, when it's mounted just behind your saddle and then this, the bag itself kind of projects upwards, uh, from the saddle, like that can really, yeah, that can definitely affect, um, the, the way that your bike is swaying. I have heard that other saddle packs have like um mounting systems where it's more of like a kind of a harness that uh actually attaches to the bottom of your saddle um and then you know the the bag itself kind of slots into this harness um and so those ones it sounds like those are much easier to like just slip in and out um without having to kind of undo all of the clasps and everything um the way that you have to with this saddle bag um yeah so that I do feel like I'm missing out here a little bit with with that um you know without that kind of feature um also I mean this bag like when you do take it off like why would you ever take it off because it's kind of it's not a convenient bag to carry around when it's not on a bike right it really is designed to just kind of become a part of your bike and never ever come off um so I think that it, it it does uh it is missing a little bit of versatility in that realm Ortlieb's commitment to waterproofing their bags and also retaining like repairability and durability is definitely reflected in this bag. Um, if they, you know, they they use stitching wherever possible, um, and like all of the weight bearing points on this bag uh, are kind of screwed into the bag itself, um, so no rivets are being used. Um, so it's pretty easy to like replace individual components if needed. So yeah, that's definitely a positive for the longevity of this bag. Let's talk about the aesthetics a little bit. Um, I love this color scheme. So orange highlights on like a charcoal background, that is my favorite. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't really go with my bike, which is a very like pretty blue color. Um, but uh, yeah, if it, and and Ortlieb seems to be you know kind of they they've got this whole this same color scheme for like their entire line of bike packing products. Uh, so you know if if you if you kit yourself out with like their entire lineup, then you'll have a, a nice color coordinated setup there um which is always you know always a fun thing they have uh some retro reflective like slow vehicle triangles on the back of the bag um which is really appreciated and that's something that orlieb does on on most of their bags as well um it also has plenty of like slots uh to strap or clip a tail light to um and they have like you know b- the reason that they have so many of those slots is because like depending on how much stuff you've got packed into the bag right you'll you'll be rolling it down um to different degrees 
and uh and so like different ones of those slots will be um exposed will be like pointing outwards towards the traffic behind you um so you'll usually usually you want to put the you know you, you keep the tail light off of the bag until you've packed everything into it and rolled it down and, and clipped it closed and then uh and then you put the light onto whichever one of those slots actually makes sense there's uh there's one last piece of this uh bag that man it frustrated me to no end um but uh the the air release valve so most of these like saddle packs that i've seen right because they're like roll top uh kind of closing mechanisms um most of them like you you're you need to be able to have that air that's inside get out in some way as you're rolling down the top so most of them have you know some sort of like air release valve that you can open and close um and the one that that ortley put on here is kind of it's a pull tab right so when you want to the, the air to be able to escape from the inside of the bag you kind of pull it outwards um and i found it very very difficult to grab it to be able to grip this pull tab even with like my bare fingers it was kind of a challenge but especially like in the winter time when i'm wearing gloves um it was next to impossible and so i had to um you know fashion myself get a little uh like strap um actually i grabbed the one from the rock form phone mount um it had the that phone mount came with like a backup strap that i can kind of loop through uh my my phone case uh and and loop that you know clip that to um my handlebars if i if i wanted to have a backup system so that you know if it if it pops out of the phone mount itself then my phone uh doesn't go flying away um but i you know i feel confident enough in that phone mount that i did, don't ever like really use that so um instead i took that and i kind of looped it through the the air valve on this um seat pack and uh, and now I've got you know something that's a little bit easier to grip. Um, as I'm looking at pictures of the seat pack on Ortlieb's website, it looks like they have included one of those in you know it looks like they they've done some slight updates to the product, and it looks like they include uh, basically exactly what I fashioned for myself um, in the product now. So hopefully that's not um, you know a, a concern anymore. Um, but it is you know it like. They didn't. They didn't fix like the 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 problem itself, which is just the fact that like this air valve is kind of an awkward design. It's you know the pull tab design is. I don't think it's the best because like even when you're like having to push it back in to close it up again, um, it's a little bit difficult. You know, it, it sometimes it goes in at like a weird angle, and then you you know you have to press harder on the other side to like get the other side to go in. Um, so it's just kind of it's a weird mechanism. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but um, you know it's uh, it's not the end end of the world. So final thoughts on this one. Um, I don't think I will be keeping this uh this pack um I've tried out other ones that I like a little bit better um but I still have this one for now because uh one of my one of one of the bikes that I'm borrowing um is in the saddle is incompatible with the other with the other bag that I'm using but once I have complete control over like what saddles I have on all of the bikes that I'm using um I will probably uh switch over to just using the uh revelate spine lock um and if you want to hear more about the revelate spine lock yeah come back for the next episode where i'll be talking about it so thanks for listening to this episode of second opinion i've been your host ian r buck you can find me on twitter as ian r buck this episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO112. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. 
and if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can do, do so on our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from the the technological technological convergence. convergence. You are about to become obsolete. You think you are special, unique, and that whatever it is that you are doing is impossible to replace. You are wrong. As we speak, millions of algorithms are frantically running on servers all over the world with one sole purpose. Do whatever humans can do, but better. But all is not lost. Look for the audiobook, Robots Will Steal Your Job, But That's Okay, at thenexus.tv, or by searching in your favorite podcast player.